Hello, it's Sally here at Dotty B. Welcome to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be working, uh, I'm going to start a new project really. Um, I want to show you my um, journal uh, now that it's finished um, and then go on to um, do the first project. Um, th this, is, um, fo this is following on from, um, following on with um, K K3N Cloth Tales. Um, she's doing a weekly project um, of little stitcheries um, and um, they're all just tiny tiny little stitcheries about probably about four inches square um, that are going to be put into a journal one per week um, so you uh, this one it's like a 52 page journal um, I might I'm not committing myself to all of them because I also want to do some of my own projects to put in here as well but this is kind of like my um, 2024 journal of little stitcheries so that's what I'm going to be doing um, throughout the year whether it's following on following with somebody else or doing my own thing because I, I want to this year um, I want to delve into um, the, uh, the origins of slow stitching and going back to more basic things I, I do a lot of um, decorative stitcheries which are quite complicated um, and they you know that they, they, they are long projects so what I wanted to do was go back to go back to basics really and just discover you know the basics of slow stitching and the principles of slow stitching and whatnot so I've been I've been reading up about that um, I was lucky um, at Christmas that I got um, some books from my fa family that my family bought me I, I did choose them I did say uh, these are the books that I would like if you'd like to buy me one then I would be really happy if you're struggling for a present for me so which they always struggle for presents for me so rather than smellies and chocolates and whatnot um I said you know if if you're struggling then the, these books I would love um so I was lucky enough to get several books on slow stitching which I will show you in another in another video um and whatnot and it kind of takes you back to the beginning and gives you the origins of um it, of slow stitching although from what what I can read I, I can't really find a precise person or anything that was kind of responsible for it. it's kind of evolved almost and it's always been around so I think it's just um we stitchers have kind of honed in on it a little bit at the moment because of the, the mindfulness aspect of it you know with all our busy lives and everything that's going on around us it's nice to just go back to something that's quite basic it's been around for thousands of years um and just you know just do something that you enjoy and it relaxes you and whatnot so anyway that's for another video this one here um, I just wanted to show you my um, my journal that I've made now. Um, I did, I did, I don't know whether I made a mistake or not, but I couldn't get the fold right, how it folds round and everything. And I, I put it on, and then what happened was um, I had this the tie on this, so it went round that way. So then it kind of covered up my number, and then I thought, well, should I put my number here? Um, I couldn't quite get it right. So what I've decided to do is I've decided to have my flap there pull that over and then tie that round and it goes through there so it's probably the wrong way around for um anybody who does journals and whatnot but it's it's right for me so um that's <laughs> that's what i decided it's the first one of these kind that i've made and um it's it's right for me and that's all that matters so um i'm not too fussed um so that that's my my cover anyway um i had a little if you've seen the previous video where i was laying it all out i had um these are like salvage edges from fabric and it um it was um 2021 and I thought oh if I put a v there then it'll be 2024 so I've, I've I've actually um embroidered a v it's not very fine it's just a little bit rough but that's okay it doesn't matter I wasn't pretending it to be part of the numbers it, you know I can see that it's added on and whatnot and um, so I've, I've put that on there so this is my 2024 journal um that went a little bit skew if as well as you can see it wasn't quite i wanted it central it wasn't quite central but hey ho and it's upside down if you really are being picky because i put i put i, I sewed everything on upside down and i had to i, I sewed that an upside down I, I had a right fiasco with it but um i didn't want to take that all off because that was also down so i kind of left that in fact what i'll do is i'll just hopefully you can see this so that's my finished cover and I'm pleased with it I love the colorways and how 
muted it kind of looks now um so yeah i'm happy with that and yes it's got mistakes on there but they're my mistakes and i own them and hey ho it doesn't matter i love it anyway so um it's perfectly imperfect perfectly imperfect yes that's right isn't it imperfect yes so there we go so i'm pleased with that anyway so and then inside i've got all of my they've gone a little bit bendy for some reason but i'm sure they'll straighten out once i start filling it up and there's my my pages um to fill up throughout the year so that's that i'll pop that to one side all ready to fill up and here's my little workbox that I've got. So this is an old vintage tin. Um, I think it is a sewing tin, um, workbox on there. Um, because I buy and sell vintage and whatnot, um, I come across these, um, not often, but um, I've, had a, I've had a few to sell. Um, and I thought I'm gonna keep one back. So I, I kept this one back. It's a little bit tattered and torn, a little bit scuffed and whatnot. But um, if you look inside, Got a little little thing there for you. I don't know your pens or whatever you want to put in there. I don't know whether Bob. I don't think bobbins fit in because um, it doesn't quite close with bobbins in. So anyway, I've got my little workbox. I've got my threads. Probably need more threads, but um, I've got my little square. That's my four-inch square, or I think it's ten centimeters. Um, just have a look. Oh, it's more than ten actually. It's uh, say. 11 centimeters it's just over 11 centimeters is that square 11 yeah just over 11 centimeters square but it's about it's not even four inches it's over four it's four and it's not quite four and a half but um well, whatever doesn't matter i've measured it i think i did measure it against my page um yeah so it will fit on there with if i need um if i um, go over it doesn't really matter too much but it is going to fit on there so um it doesn't matter much i think actually i don't think i actually cut this i think this is one i found in um, a scrap box so that's why i've used it um i've picked out some fabrics um and all the rest are just um my scissors and whatnot and um oh, i've been struggling for a um a um, needle case so I quickly made a needle case um, the other day um, it's just two pieces put together so together with a bit of felt in the middle it's all by hand and it's just got my favorite needles in there because I just keep losing them and whatnot so I thought I'll just have a, a little like a little needle case um, so that's that and just got all my little clips and scissors and whatnot are in there so what I've done is um, I thought if you've watched some of my previous videos, you'll know how much I love edgings. So I thought I would explore that further. I hope I'm not boring you by going on about edgings and whatnot because um, they are part of what I work with um, and what I love. So um, you'll probably see them quite often in my videos. So I've just dug out, this is just from my scrap box. Um, I don't really like using new stuff until I kind of need to. Um, if there's stuff in my scrap box that I like, that I can use, then I will use that first before starting to cut up um, the old linens and whatnot. So, I mean, I love the old linens and I love using them, but I do kind of, they're precious. So I do um, like to get, you know, uh, my money's worth, not my money's worth out of them, that's not right. I like to get, use them up fully and not waste them. I don't want to waste them, is what I mean, because they're precious. So um, I like to use them up and whatnot. So anyway, I've got all these edges, all things that are just little scraps that I've used already. I've, you know, I've used part of the fabric already and these are just leftovers. They look like they've come from the same plate, they're, they're the same. Um, just little bits of hank, not hankies, I think some might be hankies actually, that's a hanky, and napkins and tablecloths, um, a bit of salvage there. I quite like um, the writing and it's about the right size for, I'm thinking they've got to be that, yes, kind of like that size, so I was thinking that, was be quite, that might be quite nice to put on. Um, got this, <laughs> um, we talk about um, tea dyeing and coffee dyeing and whatnot well I don't know whether I can actually claim that was coffee dyed but I had a spillage and um, that was one of the casualties but I thought if I cut that maybe it would look okay I don't know we'll see how it goes I, I suppose I could have tried to wash it and get the stain out but um, 
I thought maybe one day it'll come in handy for something. So um, we'll try that anyway. Um, another one here, just um, with the edging on that one, quite like that. Um, this one again, this was an old tablecloth. I've used this so many times, this edging, and I've used the um, bits in projects as well. A um, little bit of tickingy type fabric there. Some edging on sheets. Um, what else have we got? These these were from past projects that... Um, have I told you what we're doing? This is weaving. We're doing fabric weaving. Sorry, I don't think I've covered what we're actually doing. This The first project is um, fabric weaving and the theme is community and how we all weave into one community. So that, that's kind of where that comes from. So I, I don't think I mentioned that. So that's what I've got all my fabric for, to do some fabric weaving. Um, I don't know whether that's going to be long enough or not. It might be just long enough, I'm not sure. Um, so, and these are just strips that I've used on other projects that I've um, I thought that would be quite an interesting one. It's a bit crinkle, but it doesn't matter. I don't ironed any of them. I'm not going to iron any of them either. I like the, um, the little, they're not too crinkled, most of them. So anyway, let's get started. So this is my piece. Oh, and I've got some, fla I've got some florals as well, just to, uh, that has been tea dyed. That was quite bright and brash, but um, it's quite nice now. I like that um, floral and a few more little bits and pieces. So I'm going to stick into the pinks and blues and beiges and whites. That's that's my that's my colour scheme. I'm trying to stick to something. Um, if any of you have seen my previous videos, then you'll know that um, I can't resist colour. So it's not worth me even trying to be neutral. To be honest, oh, I got a bit of lace there. I thought that might be interesting to weave in. It's all it should be ironed, but it's not. It's all scrunchy. But um, I like the um, the texture of it. It's an old piece of um, lace that I think went round um, a handkerchief or a doily or something like that. It's actually got corners on it, but um, I thought I might be able to pinch a straight piece. We'll see how we go. Anyway, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Is weaving oh do you know what i um actually treated myself this week um oh where did i put them hang on i know where they are I treated myself to some applique pins um someone saw me struggling on one of my videos with some big pins the longer pins and said i think you might be better off with some applique pins so i thought i would try them so i've gone and bought myself some so we'll see how we go with those. Um, and I think that's about it for now. So let's get started. So I'm going to just take this piece here and I need my scissors. So I'm just going to cut, um, I want it quite dainty. Don't want it too, the piece is too thick. So I'm just going to go for, these are kind of like one centimetre. Um, what would that be in inches? About not it's about, it's about half an inch, half an inch or a centimetre, something like that. So that's the first one. And because the design's on the bottom, I'm just going to it's probably starting on the wrong side, aren't I? I don't know, I don't think it matters, do it? Does it? So I'm going to pop that one there. And line it up with the edge. Okay, oops, I'm getting all caught up in all the little strands. Right, so let's go for a, an edge. Um, I do like this one. I've not, that's a green one, but I'm going to go for the blue. I do like this blue edge. I don't seem to have much of it left now, although it is white, white, white. I'm not going to um, have it this thick though going to take off the that little bit and just have it like that and there we go which is quite white against that I may have to change that I'm not sure I'm going to try I'm going to see how I get on with this one the edge on this this is a blue again as well so this is keeping in my theme um I should have that one have that one there Yeah, I'm 
not sure whether that goes. Um, I'm doubting that one. Right, let's have another florally one. Let's try this one here. Or oh, let's try that edge because that one's already been cut. I'm going to go a little bit thicker. I'm varying my widths. I'm kind of be I'm kind of being a bit I'm going over the edges both top and bottom um okay so I want to put some interest in I'm just wondering whether that one will very close to the, to the it's a little bit smaller than let's see if it'll look okay I don't think that's enough I'm not sure whether it's going to rip Okay, so we've got that one. It is slightly too small, but I'm going to do that. So there's a tiny little bit both edges. We'll see how that one goes. I've got some gingham here. I'm going to pop. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. That doesn't quite. I want to do two more, I think. So do I do half of this? Let's see if I can get this into half. A little bit smaller. It's quite hard to rip this one is. Ooh. Okay. Well, it's done it. There we go. That one. And then one more edge. Let's have oh I've got that. No. We'll have that one for an across one. Um I'll have that on an across one. Let's get some of this one here. That's quite nice. I like that. It's about there. Ooh. How much do we need? Yes, that's but plenty. I want to kind of keep that corner because I like um, I like to keep the corners for when I'm doing other projects where I need a, I need a corner. So uh, I won't cut right into that one. But then there's that there. And we have that, should we have that that way? On the edge, or shall I have it over there? Have it there, right. Okay, so that's that. And then I think I need to pin them now. Pin the top, at least. Um, oh, okay. Right, these are very, very small. So how are you all today? Hope you're all well and finding time to stitch. Um, it's a Saturday here today. Um, I think this will be going out on a Saturday as well. I might, I'm going to post this one later as soon as I've finished it, I think. Um, so I woke up this morning, the sun was shining, beautiful day. It's only about 11 degrees, I think it is. So it's, it's still coolish, but not, not freezing cold like it has been. Um, yeah, lovely sunny day. Um, it's clouded over a little bit now, but um, I can see blue sky still with the, within the clouds. So um, yes, it's a lovely, lovely day. It always uh, cheers me up when the sun's out. You wake up to the sun shining. So um, we were having, well, making our breakfast this morning, and we looked out of the window, my husband and I and um, there was two pigeons on the fence and they were right they were really close to each other and they were like pr they were preening each other I thought, oh how sweet that taking it in turns just to, to to preen each other it was lovely really nice although pigeons are a little bit they <laughs> they make so much noise and they're really clumsy and whatnot and they knock all the stuff over but um it was lovely to see them in the garden and just I don't know whether it's mating season or not but they were sat there pruning each other really close and the next were like because they were like doing this to each other and then the next kind of went like that and the heads went like that I thought oh how lovely it was really sweet to watch so um we stood there for a little moment while the toast was doing and the porridge was doing 
and um, I watched the pigeons. Right, so what I'm doing is I'm taking alternate strips up and laying another piece underneath. Um, I think it needs to be as close to the top as you can get, but obviously the pins are there and I don't mind a little bit of bit of showing of that one, that's fine. So that's the first one. And then what you do is you take the next one, the opposite ones up. I'm sure you probably know how to weave, but like that and like that. When um, I did this for um, the, Ro the Roxy Journal of Stitchery, the volume four, we did a little bit of weaving if, you'd, if you um, took part in the Roxy project. And um, I didn't put pins in it. <laughs> it took me quite a while to, to weave, to be honest, because I didn't, I didn't pin things down. So it was all coming up and everything. It, it took me probably longer than it should have done, but um, I got there in the end and I was really pleased with how it, yeah, Madam, to France fits perfectly so that's what I'm going to um, I'm going to cut out oh, we've lost the Jolie Jolie we've got Madame in, in, in Prime en France And then I think I'm just going to try and get a little bit more off so I can have them finish. So it's going to go there. I don't know what will be visible and what won't. That's what we're getting. So that imp throng, that's what we get. But hey ho. It's there, I know it's there, and that's all that matters. Okay, so then let's get the other one, next one up, like that. That, and on that. Am I odd or even? Oh, I've done odd ones. I think it's better if you, I think it's better if you work odd. I think, I'm sure I, I've, I, I'm also watching um, a lady called Jude Hill. She does um, spirit cloth. Her, cha her channel is Jude Hill Spirit Cloth, her YouTube channel. Um, oh, she's, yeah, she's really, I'm watching all her old videos at the moment. Um, they're really interesting. And she does all this kind of thing, um, you know, a lot, a lot more, I don't like to say basic because it's not, but it's back to basics, if you like. And it's, it's just the origins and the way cloth talks to you and, you know, and you, you know, it's giving you, ins the cloth is giving you inspiration and um, and whatnot. It's, it's lovely. If you get the chat, well, if you have time, please go and, go and view her, her videos. There. Some of them are only like minutes long, so you can get through them quite fast. You know, I, I, um, I have, I've had to slow down because I was um, taking in so much information and then I was thinking, oh, I can't remember, you know, I was thinking, can I remember things or can I not remember things and whatnot? So I kind of, I've slowed down a little bit just to digest them um, a little bit more. So I'm going to pop a little bit of lace in that bit there. So I'm not, I'm not going to straighten it too much. I'm going to have it a little bit um, scrunchy, but it's going to have to, excuse me, it's going to have to fold down a little bit because otherwise... I won't be able to guess. I'm hoping this works. Anyway, I'd like a little bit of lace interest. I'm not sure whether I should put it right in the centre because that might hinder what I'm going to. No, I don't think it will actually. I think it's fine. What I'm going to do on top of all this, the sewing on top of it. But no, I think that'll be fine. That one and that one. It's starting to get a little bit more resistant now. But Right, I'm going to pop a little bit of this. Nope, it won't go that way. I'm going to have to do it this way. Um, just trying to find a straightish edge where I've, I think that's straight, where I've um, ripped it. There we go. Nice, grungy little rosy bit. 
quite bright. In fact, I've still got some that hasn't been tea dyed yet. Um, and I, <laughs> I had to look at it the other day and I thought, oh, blimey, that's bright. And um, I don't know whether it's just my taste that's kind of altering a little bit. I don't know. But um, I'm not sure. But I still, I love colour. I can't get away from not using too much colour. But um, I'm hoping that it's all tonal. It's all going to blend into, you know, it's all kind of blends. Do I want that one? Could kind of get, I'm just thinking where the fabric will lie and will I see these stripes? Because <coughs> otherwise, if I don't see the stripes, I suppose it's just a plain piece of fabric. Um, not that it matters, but... Do I want that one? Let's just see what else I've got. Um, do I want to do it more? Do it more? Let me just. I'm just waffling. I'm just waffling. Um, do I want another edge? I think I want another edge. I'm going to go for another edge, not a pattern. So I've got this one here. I've obviously started some kind of project on this one, and I, I think oh, I was doing something to do with circles. I was cutting out circles because you can see I've drawn some. I can't remember what it was that I was doing. Mm. No, I can't remember at all what I was doing. It's probably been in there quite a while. Um, what else have I got? What other? I've got that one, but that one is is similar to that. Um, what other one I've got? I've got this. This is a little bit of white. Or oh, that right? That that use that use that. That's I've used that one. Use that one. Use that. Okay, they're, they're all going over that side because I've used those. I've used those. Oh, have I used? Yes, I've used those. I haven't used that one. I haven't used that. Use those. Use those. So I've got this one, this one. If that's the right length, then that, no, it's not the right length. That one's out of the way. So I've got either this one. Uh, nope. I've got this. I think it's going to be this. This or this. That's what I've got left. Um... Mm -hmm. I'm going to use this one, I think, because of the blue. I like the blue. So I'm going to leave the corners because I can use the corners on another project. I think that's about... I think that's about right. I'm just going to do a tiny little bit more. And then that way... And just measure it. There. Oops, I think I stuck scissors. <laughs> there, right. Let's have a look at this. Um, did I? No, I didn't. That one. Do I go that way or that way? Yeah, go that way. There we go. And that's the last one. And because I have that's going to go over there, isn't it? So it looks a little bit short, but I think it'll be fine once it's tied down. So that's that. There we go. Um I've still got to tie it down and whatnot, but I just want to make sure it fits on my page-ish. Um or if I need to put down some of the, I've got quite some quite long ones, long bits that I don't really want to have over the page. So I think everything will be fine. I'm going to snip that one down there. Um, that one's going to go down a tiny bit. I'm going to fray these edges just so they look. Um, and that one. there. I think that will be fine. Or will it? I'm just going to get rid of that a little bit. I may need just to snip this one a little bit as well. I don't want, it, I don't want them to be too even. 
I will fray them. But I think that'll be okay. I might need to get some of those down a little bit. Just I don't want it to, um, I want it to lay flattish. I think that'll be okay. We'll go with that. I can always snip them a little bit more. So I'm just being careful because I don't want it to come undone. But that is kind of it. Um, right, I need a needle. So that's what's I down. Um, maybe that one. And I've just got some white cotton, white thread. This is it's a vintagey one that I've salvaged from somewhere. And I'm going to do an invisible stitch to tack it all down. Um, Jude Hill goes through this um, in one of her videos, well in most, a lot of her videos because this is a stitch that she does um, regularly um, and it's just a tiny stitch on the front and then you move along on the back and it, it tacks it all in place but obviously it's not a tack that you can see on the front just a tiny like, tiny stitch if they're wide they may need two stitches per strip and then you just move along move along on your piece and you go all the way around and that will secure even though you haven't secured inside it should secure it so it doesn't oh, let me just take that one out because I've wrapped my thread around it like so so I don't think I need to put any more pins in in fact I can take that one out they're teeny tiny you will see a little bit of a dimple or a little bit of the fab, the stitch, but um, it doesn't matter. I'm going to just take that one out and that one out, and then I'm going to have to be careful. I'm going to go and just to tighten it all up again, just neaten it all up because some of these are coming loose a little bit. I probably should have pinned it all the way around but um, I haven't. I'll have to take that out because I can't get my needle through. <laughs> right, so that's secured the top. Okay, and then I'm going to go around here, but it's come loose a little bit. I'm sorry, I don't know whether I got you got my head there. It's a bit close to the camera. Right, I think what I may do is just just do small pins, pins because I think it might be coming undone. That's no good. I've got one stuck in my skin. Nippers. So if I do that, then that should be okay. And then what I can do is I can reposition it all as I'm going round. I think that's what I'm going to do. Hopefully that will work. Just straighten them out a little bit so it lies flat. Um, the thing I love with this is you've got all these little scraps that really they're they aren't they aren't doing much that you know you can you obviously can still use and whatnot but you're making another piece of fabric that you've created all by yourself unique to you no one will ever have another one of these uh, yeah you 
got a little piece of fabric to work with. You can do whatever you want. You can pop it into a book like I'm going to do. You can make lots of them and sew them all together, make a decorative wall hanging. You could make a cushion, make a quilt. I've, I've never made a quilt or anything like that because I just, I think it would take too, just too much dedication. I don't know, it's just not something that I've ever done quilting. I was watching um, K3N um, last night. She's um, just put out a video on um, log cabins. I think she's doing a series actually. And um, I, I, I'd also just watched um, Jude Hill um, doing her log cabins. And that, that's my kind of log cabin is when it's kind of higgledy piggledy. It's not cut out um, in uniform shapes because um, I think patchwork is quite a an art in itself and you have to be quite um, precise I think that's the word and I'm not precise I like higgledy piggledy um, and I don't want precise and whatnot so I think that's probably why I, it's never something that's appealed to me patchwork in in that kind of way but patchwork in higgledy piggledy style appeals very much to me so i'm going to be it's probably going to be my next video actually is doing um a little log log cabin square jude hills a la jude hill style um all higgledy piggledy which i quite like the idea of it's just strips again i mean isn't it amazing what you can do with just these little tiny strips making fabric out of out of just tiny bits of fabric that you know you could be you know sometimes i mean i know i've done it in the past where i've done a project and there's been this little strip and i've just chucked it away and thought you know i don't think i'll be using that again um and it wasn't until i've you know i've really delved into slow stitching that i save all my scraps these will be saved these little bitty little tiddly little bits i've got a drawer um by the side of my desk i've got like this old filing cabinet um let's see if i can right okay i'm gonna get a drawer out for you this <laughs> this is my orts drawer if you like hopefully you can see that it's kind of a long drawer and i just shove bits in there yep some of them might be too small and I mean, yeah, that's probably too small to use and I probably need to have a clear out and whatnot. But this is kind of like my drawer where I just put things that I maybe had for a project and then, um, or scraps, you know, just bits. I mean, I could have used that today, couldn't I? I didn't look in here. Look, I mean, there's that as well. Um, so there's all bit. so this is like my Orts drawer of fabric. Um, and I go through it and just have a rummage every so often just put my little bits in, my little scraps in, and um, they may come in handy one day, you never know. I mean, if it gets too full, I've only had this a short while, this cabinet, um, like chest of drawers, it's like a drawer thing. There's about one, six, there's six drawers, six of these, and they've all got different bits in, but um, that's my drawer. I just pull it open when I've got a load of scraps and chuck them in there. So um, that's, that's what I do anyway with my bits and pieces. And um, hopefully they'll come in handy one day. Um, I'll probably need to have a sort out of it. Um, oh, I had, a, I had, um, I wasn't doing much when I was waiting for the tea to cook last night. And so I came in here and, oh, it was a mess. Because you know how it gets when you're doing a project, things just get strewn all over the place and you do have to have a tidy up every so often. So I thought I will have a little bit of a tidy up while I'm waiting for the dinner to cook and I've got nothing else to do. I mean, all, all I'd do is sit and watch the telly or something or go onto my iPad and I don't know. Anyway, so I came in here and started tidying up and it's like, it took, uh, you know, I was doing it for quite some time in between, it, like cooking the dinner and stuff. And um, what was I saying? Oh, I've lost my train of thought now. Just, yeah, just finding scraps and bits and pieces that I didn't know I had. And it's terrible, really, because 
I found a load of sewing, um, like, you know, the six-stranded, I think that they're, they're either DMC or Anchor, I can't remember what they were now. Like, a bulk of those in variegated tones and everything, and I didn't realise I had them. I thought, oh, blimey, they would have come in handy um, for some a project that I was doing um, the other week. But, um, I mean, they'll still come in handy for something, but um, I didn't realise that. I felt bad because I didn't realise I had them, and I've just put them away and forgotten about them. <laughs> so I am trying, I'm moving around my room. I'll have to do um, a bit of a room tour, I think, with you one day. But it's not a very big room and it is a mess because, well, it's not a mess, but it's just, there's a lot in here because because I also do the um, vintage and antique stuff. That I've got all that in here as well, bits and pieces that are either waiting to be restored or waiting to go to the shop. And I haven't, you know, it might not be the right season or, like I've got, a, an 18, I know it's still February and I've got a fire guard, but I've already got a fire guard at the shop already. So I've only got a limited amount of space at the shop where I put my stuff. So um, I've got like a fire guard. I've got in summer, um, what really sells, do you know the old vintage um, cake stands? They're wooden and they're, they're quite tall. They're about, oh, I would say, I'm just looking at one now. They're about three, at least three foot, no, probably, three, I'm going to say three foot high. They're wooden and they kind of collapse, the collapsible ones. And they've got like three wooden plates on them almost, like shelves. And they've got a stand and they're, they're quite high. And they, they sell really good, well in summer. But so what I, when, I, when I see them, I have to buy them. And because it's not summer at the moment and nobody's buying cake stands to have their tea parties and whatnot um i've got i've got one at the shop already that's not not selling because it's not summer and i've got another i've never got one two three i've got three here as well waiting to go to the shop so um they're all stacked up well one of them i've got all my sewing bits and pieces on and what and two i've kind of folded up and put on one side i've got a couple of suitcases <laughs> I've got mirrors, I've got, oh, I've got a stool, a book trough, oh. plus I've got a corner cabinet with all bits and pieces in and um, the bottom bit is where I put seasonal stuff like Christmas decorations that didn't sell or uh, throughout the year I also look out for Christmas decorations, vintage Christmas decorations to buy to keep for Christmas so obviously I need somewhere to store them in the year so that's um that comes in handy for that but um yeah i'm surrounded by all the things i love so it makes me happy to come in here and just see what some people might call a mess i call paradise heaven <laughs> it's lovely <laughs> but i do like it when it's nice and tidy I don't mind having a lot of stuff as long as it's organised stuff, organised chaos, if you know what I mean. Right, have I gone all the way round? I may have. Let's have a look and see. There, so I've gone all the way round with the um, invisible stitch. So you can see, if I turn it over, oh, I've got a pin. I've just noticed there's a pin somewhere here. Look at that. If I hadn't turned that over and seen it, I would have not realised that was hiding in there. I'm just going to pop the lid on these so that I don't knock them over and they go everywhere. So, okay, that's done. And yeah, I can see, if you look at the back, you can see I've gone all the way round. Although that's, there's kind of missed a little bit and that's missed a little bit, but never mind. I'm sure it'll hold because I'll be putting more stitches on top. So that is that. Let's just finish this off. Like so, and snip. Okay, so um, there is an upside. I suppose it doesn't have to be, but it's there because that's how I've made it. I've got the numbers that way and the words that way. So that's my ups, that's my orient orientation. The way it, yeah, that's the way it's going to be. So that's the first bit done. Got a few little loose ends. I may snip them off as I'm going. I'm not sure yet. Now. Um, when um, Catherine, Catherine did this, she um, stitched, um, I'm trying to think what she did now. 
she stitched over all the way which I'm going to do and I think she put some de decorative stitches um, here and there as well which I quite like the idea of so I might do some lines of like fly stitch um, on the seams like I do when I'm doing the um, crazy patchworky type um, base fabrics that I use for my projects so I'm going to do that and then um, so that's that's really the next thing I'm going to do so I'm going to unthread that one and get some thread um, now this is my go-to thread when I want a colour but I want a neutral colour but a colour that goes with everything I don't know what it is with this colour I just absolutely love it and it goes with everything so that's what I'm going to use it's a Silco um, if you've watched my channel before then you've seen it before because I use it a lot um, it's just a machine thread but it's it's just it's really nice to sew with I just love it um, I am. I know there's loads left. I wonder how many meters there are on it in total. Does it say? It doesn't say how many meters there are. But I don't know what I'm going to do when it's gone. It'll be one of those things. I'll use it and use it and use it, and then when I'm got down to the use it. I'm using it now whenever I want. <laughs> so I'll be using it sparingly. I think when um, when it goes down too far. Right. Um, so I'm just thinking, am I going to just do one line, stitch all the way, or... Right, I'm going to start here, because I want to. And I'm just going to do a fly stitch all the way down. So it's like that, like that, and you go over to that side again. That's going to be one key. Never mind, it doesn't matter. I don't mind one key. So, like that. So you go down to do the little stalk bit over to that side. Well, I suppose it's the body of the fly, is it? And then one of the wings over that side. Back over this side, into that bit. And down. It makes a lovely lovely pattern all the way down your, your piece. I'm trying to keep central and I'm trying to stitch just slightly over to one side so that I catch the, um, the, 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 the frayed bit, the edge. So on this, so it was here this time, so now it's here. So it's probably going to be a little bit zigzaggy maybe. It might work out zigzaggy. If that's a word, zigzaggy. That is not right. What have I done there? That's not right. Let me just undo that. And um, if I'm not concentrated, I get it wrong. <laughs> oh dear me! Let's try again. Right, that needs to go into the stalk of... I don't think I did the last stitch right. I'm not paying attention, am I? Pay attention, Sally. Look, yeah, that one's not done right. I think... Or is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, it is. I can see what I've done. Right. That's my... Um dehumidifier telling me that it's full up of water now it's stopped it's nice and quiet there we go i think that's right now yep okay so back on it back rolling So I think I'm going to go all the way down with this one. If I can get my knots out. Oh dear, what am I doing here? There we go, like that. There we go. It is a bit wonky, but as I say, 
doesn't matter one bit because really I need to now go over here to this one. <laughs> so it's going to swerve right over, I think. Let's see what it looks like. If it looks too, too much then. It might look nice, curvy. I don't know. Like a wavy, a wavy fly stitch. Is there such a thing? Right, let's try and get back on track here. This is It's definitely going to um, curve. Oh, that looks quite nice, actually. I don't mind that. See, if I was planning, that's the beauty of just going, going with it. If I was planning this out and I drew out my plans and whatnot, then I would not have drawn out a wavy fly stitch. Did anyone know that there was an, a, such a thing as a wavy fly stitch? <laughs> oh, my days. But, um, yeah, sometimes you just have to go with the flow and see where the needle takes you. See, that's the beauty of slow stitching. You don't, I don't know how I'm going to get back over this side. How on earth am I going to get back over there? Yeah, it's just, you know, you just have to go with the flow sometimes and see where the needle and the fabric take you. Needle and thread and fabric take you. It might not be where you planned, but it's a journey in itself. I'm not, I'm trying to work back over there, but I don't know whether I'm going to get back over there very much. It's not even looking, it's a very wide fly stitch now. That's not even right. What on earth have I done there? That's not right either. Right, I've got to undo that because I don't know what I've done wrong there. down yeah that's right um what was i saying yeah yeah sometimes you just have to go with the flow and see where it takes you and you get either a disaster you can unpick it no big deal or it could be a happy accident and it's all good and you discover New stitches, like wavy fly stitch. So, I think that looks okay. And I like how, I like the effect actually, I really do. Right, I'm going back over this side now because I've got this one. Have I done that right? Right, I think what I might do, rather than um, make you watch me just do the wavy fly stitch and any other stitches that I can mutilate, um, I, oh look, I think that looks really good actually. I'm pleased with that. I like that. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the camera off and finish off the stitches that I'm going to do to tie down all my pieces. And then I'm going to come back and show you what I'm going to do. Um, final touch. I think it's a circle that I'm going to do. And I've got an idea of what I'm going to do. So I'm going to show you that and then see what it looks like attached into my book. So I'll be back soon. Okay. Right, I'm back and it's now all been stitched down. Um, I have, um, you saw that before, I've just finished that off now, my wavy fly stitch and I have camphor stitched the rest down. So what I've done is, um, if you can see the directions, I've done some um, west to east, east to west, west to east, and then north to south. Um, that, 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 that's kind of so up and down and 
straight across, but I th I'm kind of depicting north, south, east, west. So we've got some going west to east, um, north to south, um, and I've kind of gone in quarters as well, but kind of staggered quarters. So that there is all one way. That little patch there is all that way. That little patch there is all that way. And then that little patch is all that way. So I've kind of just staggered it. So um, just to give it a little bit more interest, you can't, you can hardly see it, but um, I know it's there. So that's, that's all stitched down. Then I've just tidied up some of the edges. I've just snipped some more edges and um, just, just frayed them all um, where I thought they need fraying. So that's all done. And I've just been looking for a circle to use. Um, I got this um, thread, this reel, um, I think I got it last week or week before. So it's kind of like the perfect size, I think, for what I want to do. So what I want is a, um, a circle in the center, and then I'm actually going to um, do air north, south, west, east, um, for, for a compass, to depict a compass for all around the world, community, all around the country and whatnot. So that's kind of my um, interpretation of what I want to do. So first of all, I'm going to draw around my reel to get a circle. Um, I'm going to use a friction pen um, just because I can um, iron it off if needs be. Um, if I don't sew over all of it, then I just want to get it um, centered. I think that's about, that's about right. I'm quite happy with that there. And I'm just going to draw all the way around. something like that there we go um now i'm going to use a thread i was thinking of this red thread here um i've also got um i've also got a pink thread although i don't think it's thick enough really it's not thick enough for what i want so i think i'm going to use this red thread it will stand out quite a lot um but i think that'll be okay i'm not worried so and i'm going to couch it down so first of all and my scissors and I am going to go into my needle book because I know there's a needle in there that I can use to thread this up with okay so that's that so all I'm going to do is I'm going to um, come up there <laughs> I might need to put a knot in it maybe And try that again. So I've come up there and then I'll be going down somewhere else. But I'm just going to take the needle out for now while I couch it down. Uh, again, I'm going to be using my um, yellowy, greeny thread. Um, this is what was already left on my needle. I think there may be enough, but if there isn't, I'll have to re-thread. So all I'm going to do is just follow this circle around and I'm just going to couch this red thread down now um, and it, that's basically just going over over the thread and back up and I'm going to do that all the way around the edge of my circle it doesn't have to be perfect Going to be perfectly imperfect or imper imperfectly. I can't. I don't. I shouldn't use phrases that I can't get right. I don't know whether it's perfectly imperfect or imper imperfect. Perfect. I don't know. But anyway, it's going to be basically a circle. But if it's not perfect, then it doesn't matter. Going to go keep going round and back up again. It's um this fabric now is just feeling so lovely, even though all I've got is my backing cloth, just these pieces woven on top. It's um it's feeling really substantial now and um now it's all been sewn 
sewn down and everything. It's, it's look. I think it's looking and feeling lovely. I'm really, really happy with it. I'm lovely with. I'm lovely with. I'm happy with the tones. I think they're lovely. All the different colours that I've used. I have. I've st I have been strict with myself, and I've stuck to um, a palette of colours which I. I I'm drawn to and I like so um, visually I think it's it's great. Um, like I said before, it's just wonderful that you can just take some scraps and make a new piece of fabric. And with all these different fabrics combined, I just think it just looks. I just. Love it. <laughs> the texture is it's so tactile. I just love fabric like this. And it's been worked upon and it's got all these stitches. It's got old stitches and new stitches and imperfect little marks on it. And where I had a little bit of an accident and spilt coffee where is that one now? I can't see it. Um, I mean, even that's blended in. Where on earth is it? It's, th it's this strip here. I couldn't even see it then. That was the one where I had, um, <laughs> I was doing a project and I, I spilled my coffee. I don't do that. I try not to have um, drinks around, <laughs> around me now because um, I tend to, if you reach for something and then you knock your coffee over or your tea over or something and oh, it can make a mess everywhere, can't it? And so I try not to have a drink on my table if I can help it. I'm just going to thread that through. Oh, it's not gone through properly. Hang on, let's try that again. There we go. I'm just going to pop it back through where it came from. So we're completing the circle. I'm just going to tie it off. I think that's it. Okay, there's my circle. It um, it doesn't look perfect. It's kind of like a little bit wonky somewhere. I've gone wonky somewhere along the way, but it is okay. So that's that. And then I just want some. Um, what I'm going to do is. And then find it there as long as I can see the general in S somewhere there, and then we're west over here. going to be quite hard that's like going over lace so and this is going over lace as well here but as long as I get some kind of rough outline then I can kind of basically see what I'm going to do right colors what color I'm good I think I'm going to get a dark blue and I I'm not prepared I haven't got a dark blue let me just go and grab my um my blues Right, okay, so I've just grabbed a few. Oh, they're grey, actually. I didn't realise, I thought they were dark blues. Grey would be nice. Like, right, no, nope, that's it. I'm going to go with grey. Grey is fine. So, let me just grab that needle. And I'm just going to stitch it. Um, I think I'm just going to do a back stitch. I'm 
just going to, um, there's a couple of frayed edges sticking out. I'm going to pop them off because they're going to get in my way. Oh, it's not even coming off. on and sewn over them I suppose but um oh that's it's gone through the needle right okay so where is my needle okay let's try again I have lost I can't even see where I drew I think we're going up there is that about it maybe one more yeah up to the top there it might stand out a little bit more but maybe it will when I've finished it all but it doesn't look like it's standing out very well at the moment it must be that background piece that I'm using that I've got sure it will be fine once I've um, got a few more stitches in but it's, <laughs> it's blending in very well some reason I thought it would be quite dark but um so perhaps I've gone for a brighter colour. Oh there's something something tough there. I can't get my needle through. Again. I suppose it doesn't have to stand out like a beacon, does it? It can be subtle instead. Okay, let's try the W. going to blend in with the lace as well. It does seem to be, but I think once um once it's overall done, I stand back and look at it. I think um, I think you'll be able to see it. Okay. I like this because my surname's West as well. So this is um, another personal little touch, I suppose. Sorry if you can hear murmurings and rumblings in the background. Uh, my daughters are, I think they're baking a cake. Ouch. It's 
something nice to look forward to later. Afternoon tea. It might even be an apple pie. I know they've got apples and pastry. That's all I know. So that would get you thinking to apple pie, wouldn't it? something it's going to be something delicious anyway they're very good at making cakes and puddings and whatnot a bit wonky but that will all add to the charm oh that's why I love slow stitching because you don't have to be precise and I sometimes think the more wonky you wonkier you are the more the better it looks don't want everything to be precise and exact and whatnot so um, will I get the S out of that I should hope so let's see mm. so there's my S I think that will be doing big letter so um, I haven't got to worry too much about the curve on the uh, on the on the letters because it's quite easy to go around them sometimes it's quite hard to get a curve when you're st stitching small letters but um, this is quite a big letter so in, in size so it's it's easy to get around that curve around a little bit more Ooh. is it going to go through it's getting quite tough there bottom of the seam that's why another edge okay so how are we looking i think that's it let's see give it a good look at yeah i'm really happy with that Yeah, so we've got all of the woven fabric, that's all tied down, we've done a little bit of fancy stitching. There's the circle with the compass points. I suppose I could do a little cross inside, what about a little cross inside with points, arrows, will that be too much? I think it might be too much, what do you think, or should I do that? No, I'm going to leave it like that. I think it might be overkill if I do anything else to it. Simple and lovely. I like it. I like it a lot. Right, let me just get rid of those and grab my journal, my stitching journal now. Okie dokie. So the question is, yeah, look at that. It's fitting perfectly. I did just trim down um, some of these edges just to make sure it did fit inside. So that's going to be my first page. Um, so how am I going to attach it? Um, I don't know whether to sew it in or whether to stick it in. See, I'm not bothered about the back on this one. Some of them I might be bothered about. 
Um, I've seen um, Catherine do the um, English paper piercing one, and I probably I will want the back to be able to to flip up and show the back. But on this one, I am not bothered about it. So I think I'm going to get my glue stick out and glue it in. So that's what I'm going to do. going to glue right up to the edges. I'm going to leave some of the edges free but the centre and the base fabric I'm going to stick down. So I've used this glue before. This is just Yoohoo but you can use Pritt Stick or um, I'm sure there's other things in, um, in, in your country that you, you've got the equivalent of. Um, it's just like a paper glue stick. I've used these before and I've stuck stuff down and I've actually also removed stuff as well that I thought oh, I don't want it on that I want to use I want to do it for something else so I know that I, if I want to I can remove this I might damage the paper but I won't damage the actual stitchery um, mm -mm -mm. I'm centralizing it a little bit I think so I'm going to do that like that stick that down I'm going to get my pencil it's the what date is it today is it the is it the third of feb today so this should be week one this is week one <laughs> and so i should have done this back in january but i haven't um because i was busy um doing other projects and actually um making the journal so i didn't but hey ho i think it's the third of feb today Okay, so that's when I did it. Um, I might put some more about it. I'm not sure. Um, I might just leave it like that. I don't know. So that's how it's going to be for now anyway. So I'm quite happy with that. It's my little stitch journal diary type thing. So I will always know what I did on this day in the future. Um, so that's, yeah, page one done. And... Yeah, really happy with that. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed watching me create my um, woven fabric piece. And I hope you join me again soon. Okay, take care and see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>